for the yogis, this is a most important topic, the topic of the indriyas, or ruling faculties. And therefore, Sierraji began to talk about it. Also, TMC Sierra spoke about this topic. And no matter how you speak about it, you really can't do it justice. You can't complete talking about the topic. There's much to say. He says that he can't talk in as great detail as Sierraji is going to talk. Um, and he knows that Sierraji will go into this in, in great detail. Uh, his talk, he says, will just be superficial. The five, uh, there are nine causes for sharpening these five ruling faculties that Sierraji just gave the nine causes as headings. Do you all remember them? There are five benefits to hearing the Dhamma, and one of those, uh, to hearing the Dhamma again, and one is that although it's not new, uh, hearing it again and again, one takes it in, one takes it to heart. So, Sero asks, what is the first of the nine causes for sharpening the indriyas? So this means that every... Um, one must keep in mind that every single arising object goes away. At the start of practice, one doesn't know through one's own meditative knowledge, bhavana miyanyana, that all things pass away. But to keep this in mind in advance, um, means that when we do it, experience it in practice, we uh, confirm what we have heard. Bearing in mind that all dhammas, all, all things that we experience in our mind and body, have this nature to arise and then pass away, one works respectfully to see that in practice. So when one works respectfully in this way, in the practice, that means that one is accomplishing the task of sharpening one's controlling faculties, these five ruling faculties. The third cause is satacca kiriyaya sampaditi. That means that in the area of this um, respectful observation, as one works to develop the practice, there is no gap in between one's moments of observation, in, what, in between one's moment of, moments of, concert, con, of concentration. One has to observe continuous. So these, these first three causes are the most important for us to fulfill every moment of observation. So if in one moment of observation these, one of these three is not present, then that means there's a weakness. These three are that all, all the phenomena that we can observe, all mind and matter, have the nature to arise and pass away. One has to understand that in advance. And in, obser in observing, these phenomena, one must work respectfully. And in our observation, one moment of knowledge must follow another. One moment of concentration must follow another. This, uh, these are the three points that we must always have be present. So number four is sapaya kiriyaya sampadeti. That means that as yogis, we must have what is suitable for us. We must rely on things to a suitable extent. If we depend on these seven su suitable things in doing our practice, that means that the cause for, that this cause for sharpening the ruling faculties is present. 
at times when we practice there are difficulties and if one uh, if one works in the practice one can get to the point of overcoming these difficulties and becoming concentrated one has to remember the way one concentrated one's mind when one was able to develop good concentration in the past we've been able to overcome our difficulties and develop samadhi so when we encounter a difficulty in the again we remember the way we overcame a similar difficulty or the same difficulty in the past so we use that method that we know worked before to gain samadhi again we remember the way that we were able to concentrate our mind before and we use that method so that is this too is another way of sharpening the ruling faculties so said i'll ask doing sitting meditation have you ever encountered a difficulty during walking meditation have you encountered a difficulty so for example have you ever been sitting and not, not been able to follow the rising and falling not been able to find it or has it disappeared so have you if you've had this type of difficulty and you've been able to overcome it then this is the way that you can use to concentrate your mind in the case of difficulties so the sixth cause for sharpening the indriyas is bojangana ancha anupavutanataya that means that sometimes we have to create the factors of enlightenment develop the factors in light of enlightenment suitably in ourselves what this means is that sometimes the yogis try but although they try the noting isn't going well the practice isn't going well and then one gets depressed and one's concentration drops one's knowledge drops and other times the practice is going well we feel happy satisfied and we get elated and excited so there are these two things that can happen sometimes things fall and sometimes they're excessive so one needs to reflect suitably on the factors of enlightenment at these times to create balance there's depression and then there's elation and in these cases one has to develop the factors of enlightenment in a suitable way and as seraji has said this is related to one's individual meditation teacher this is something the individual teacher is able to point out to the students when they encounter this type of problem and because of that the faculties the indriyas are able to be developed and sharpened so for example sera is meeting daily with the yogis and um giving them the, the guidance that they need to um correct what needs to be corrected number 7 is kaija jivite cha anupakan anupakan that means that in this practice which is for gaining release from the suffering of samsara which is for gaining the first path and fruition one has to really try very hard one has to try without considering one's life and limb and if one practices in this way then this becomes a cause for one's indriyas to become sharp so how many times do you change position during a sitting that too is one of the ways that we have consideration for our body now sandaji has spoken about this before vipassana is the practice to calm the mind to make the mind subtle and calm 
So first of all, the body has to be still. If in one hour one changes one's position twice, mm. isn't, the, isn't the concentration broken? So if one changes four times in an hour, doesn't that destroy the samadhi? Mm. So if one changes every 15 minutes, or one changes position every 10 minutes, or every five minutes, won't it be difficult to gain samadhi? All we have to do is sit there, and we only have two things to watch, rising and falling. So what is so tiring about it? There was a layman who told Sayadaw, what is so difficult about this? Uh, standing in the sun and having to hit a rock is, is much more difficult. Not having regard for one's life and limb is one of the causes for one's root faculties, one's indriyas to become sharp. Mm. So the eighth cause is tatacha abhiboya nakamaina. That means that in practicing without regard for one's life or limb, there will be unpleasant, uncomfortable feelings which arise, and one has to work to overcome these. So that the ninth cause is antaracha abhyosanena. That means that one in this effort, in this practice, we've undertaken to try and get to overcome suffering. Before we reach, we reach our goal, we shouldn't end our retreat. We shouldn't give up. So that means that before one gains the Dhamma that it, one is looking for, not to leave the retreat. Don't give up. So among these nine points, these nine causes for sharpening the ruling faculties, one has to fulfill them appropriately for one's induyas to become sharp. Among these nine, as Sierra mentioned, the most important are that number one, number two, and number three be present in every single noting. So that means that every time one observes Nama and Rupa, one should understand that these have the nature to arise and pass away. And right. one should observe respectfully and without a break. So what does it mean to observe respectfully, focusedly? To work respectfully means that when we go somewhere when we stand up, when we sit down, when we bend, when we stretch, when we perform any action, we do that slowly. Not like on the outside, not like in our daily life, but like a yogi. So that is what it means to work respectfully. Only if one does things slowly will one's knowledge be able to keep up with what is doing. If one does things at the speed that one does normally on the outside, one will never be able to stay in the present moment. So therefore, if one is a yogi, one needs to reduce the speed. And this is very important. When one bends or one stretches, one needs to move slowly so that one can stay in the present. When one lifts the foot, moves, places the foot, one needs to do so slowly so that one can stay in the present moment. Mm. To observe respectfully means to observe what is happening in the present moment. That means when one is bending, one has to observe bending. When one is stretching, observe stretching. When, we're, when one is standing up or sitting down, one has to observe standing up or sitting down. So to observe so that one stays in the present moment means that one has to focus to see the ultimate reality that occur, that occur when one performs bending. One has to see what is the true nature involved in bending. 
So in order to observe so that one can stay in the present moment and come to see the ultimate reality that is there, is it needed to move slowly or not? So mm. one needs to know this for oneself. One needs to stay in the present. Don't dwell in the past. Don't imagine the future. So when one thinks about past events, one's home, one's work, people. Is that staying in the present moment? So this is Christmas time, and some, some yogis may be reflecting about Christmas, that uh, this year I didn't send out my Christmas cards, something like that. You know, remembering how we sent out Christmas cards last year and that we're not doing it this year, remembering who we met with last year, whether it's our family or other people, that's dwelling in the past. Don't dwell in the past, because if you do that, you can't stay in the present. So the first cause of sharpening our indriyas is to keep in mind that the nama and rupa, the mind and matter that we observe, arises and then whatever has arisen passes away. That means that for us, it's always New Year's. So what are we going to greet the New Year with? We're going to greet the New Year with kusala, with wholesomeness. Because every time we look at nama and rupa, mind and matter, it's arising and then passing away. So we greet the new one with a wholesome mind. So although some people wait 12 months for New Year's to come so that they can go online and send messages. Uh, for us, every moment, it's a new moment. So we can say Happy New Year every moment of the time. Mm -hmm. In order for us to be happy, it should be wholesome. And for kusala, wholesomeness, to occur. So if, if wholesomeness is not there, then kusala is not going to, happiness will not occur. So if nama and rupa in us is always arising and passing away, is that happy new year? Maybe we could say happy birthday. So this uh, happy birthday that happens with every arising and passing away of nama and rupa, mind and matter, is something that only people who meditate can know. So has a happy birthday occurred? one hasn't seen how this is a happy birthday every moment of the time, a happy new year every moment of the time, then one should work to sharpen one's indriyas with these nine factors. So in order to stay in the present moment, to be able to observe with respect and care, Sayadaji said on another day, the one has to move slowly like a sick person. So although one's eyes are perfectly good, one has to behave as though one doesn't see. That means to keep one's eyes cast down, to control one's vision. So ask yourself, are you able to control your eyes or not? Even though your eyes are good, can you control them? And if so, that means that you are working respectfully, Sakya it means that you are working respectfully. So if your dhamma is not yet good, one has to reflect on if it's because your eyes are not under control. Although our ears are good, we have to behave as though we are deaf. That means that when we hear a sound, we shouldn't turn to observe what's making the sound. One has to try to observe the, the phenomena of hearing with one's observing power at the moment it her happens. So if one's eyes and one's ears are not guarded, then that means one's observing mind is not going to be able to work. So one has to, these are very important causes. Having our eyes and ears guarded are very important in developing our observation. So in regard to controlling one's eyes, keeping one's vision guarded, there's a story about a rich man. 
not the story about a rich man, but a star, story about a Maha Tara, an, an elder, an old senior monk. So this senior monk was meditating in a cave, and the cave was quite large. And on the walls of the cave, there were paintings of scenes from the Buddha's life and how various people became enlightened and so on. There were many paintings in this cave where the uh, uh, senior monk dwelled. And one day, a young monk came and he entered the cave and he paid respects to the elder monk and he looked at the paintings and he said, these are very good paintings, Bhante. And the elder monk said, yeah, you know, I've been living here for 30 years and only now, because you have good eyes and you told me, only now do I know that there's paintings. So what that means is the monk lived there for 30 years and meditating and not once did he look up to see what was on the walls of the cave. That's how much he guarded his eye faculty. So, yogis, can you control your eyes for 30 years? So, if you can't manage 30 years, can you manage three months? So, he'll reduce reduce what he's asking. If three months of restraining your eyes is too much, can you restrain them for three weeks? Eyes are very important. One can control one's eyes, but... uh, (laughs) But uh, what about looking around to see where Seattle G is? So don't we manage to look around to see where is Seattle G? Where's our teacher? Where's the monk guarding the Dhamma Hall? So it's very important to control one's eyes. And Sierraji doesn't doesn't want people even, uh, you know, if he comes near somebody, if he happens to be near somebody, he doesn't want anybody to stop their practice and pay respects to him to lift up their hands in Anjali or bow or anything. People to pay respects with their practice. And the third cause, Santecha Kiriyaya, that means that while we are observing respectfully, working respectfully, one, one moment of observation should follow the next. One moment of concentration should follow the next. Only then will our faculties be sharp. For observation to be occurring one moment after another without a break, We have three parts, three types of observation that we do sitting, and then we do meditation while walking, and then we do meditation while we're doing general activities. So among these three parts to our day, the sitting is where it's the easiest for us to get one moment of concentration, one moment of observation to follow the next. In one sitting, we watch the rising and the falling one after another. We try to catch the rising from start to the end. So we watch one rising, one falling, ten risings, ten fallings, one minute, ten minutes. So the sitting is the easiest. And the second easiest for us to have continuity is the walking meditation. The most difficult part for us to have continuity is during observing the general activities. Among these nine causes for sharpening our indriyas, the ruling faculties, to understand that what a, that all mind and matter arises and then passes away, to respectfully observe, and to do so without a break. These are the most important. And if we can practice every moment with these three factors being fulfilled, then we can virtually, this is enough to make our indriya sharp. So ask yourself if this sakicakurya 
respectful practice is occurring or not. If, it is, if one's re- practice is respectful, then ask yourself, okay, is it continuous? Is there satya So if in one sitting, if one can observe throughout one sitting respectfully and continuously, then one has to take that from the sitting. It doesn't end there. One has to take that from the sitting into the walking. So, and only when one can carry one's walking concentration, the concentration from walking into one's sitting, will one be able to work, work continuously. So if these three factors are complete, then one will have good energy for developing the indriyas. One will come to see dhammas that one hasn't seen before, and what one has seen before will become more clear. So Sierra says, therefore, that uh, may all yogis decide that they, may all yogis be able to practice continuously and to be able to sharpen their indriyas, their ruling faculties, and realize the end of suffering, the liberation of Nibbana in this very life. No, in fact, in this very retreat. And may you decide to practice in such a way that you can truly gain this result.